What's going on guys and welcome to the very first episode of my FIFA 23 RTG career mode. Yes, it is time for a brand new project on FIFA 23 and I'm really excited for this brand new career mode. So it's an RTG and you could call it a road to glory or even a return to glory because we'll be using Malaga CF, the Spanish Segunda Division side, second tier of Spanish football who right now are on the brink of relegation to the third tier. But you don't need to go back very far in recent history to have been watching Malaga play Champions League football. That's right, about 10 years ago they were in the Champions League quarterfinals and they were seconds away from a Champions League semi-final place. They were facing Borussia Dortmund, the Bundesliga side, back then managed by now Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp. And the German team scored two goals in stoppage time to knock Malaga out of the Champions League in the quarterfinals, advanced to the semi-finals themselves, and that wasn't just the knockout blow in the Champions League, you could call it the blow that started Malaga's decline. Because after that, after falling out of Europe, they finished in a lower league position every single season following that knockout. In the end, were relegated to the Segunda Division, and now, as I mentioned a moment ago, have a very strong chance of heading down to the third tier. Malaga had a great rise since the turn of the 21st century, getting themselves into the big time, but it's safe to say they've had a very quick decline since then. So Malaga's team, as I run you through it, are a two and a half star side, uh, of course being from the Andalusia region of Spain, in the south of Spain. Um, it's a team which, you know, in, in recent years, like I say, go back about 10 years ago, had some real star power. You think of the likes of Isco, who was sold to Real Madrid, for example, Nacho uh, Monreal as well, of course, a bit of an Arsenal fan favourite too. But currently right now, this team does not have that much quality. It's got one of the oldest players in the game as well at 41 years old, Ruben Castro, who will be leading our line in this 3-5-2. And it's a side with, again, not much quality, a couple of decent youngsters, but for the most part, with around £8 million in the transfer budget, a long way to go. So this really is going to be a return to glory with Malaga. Uh, so starting off, I gave two contracts out with a few players to deal to come at the end of the year and put three players on the transfer list. You would have seen with Malaga, they've got quite a lot of old players here. Players that are in their 30s. Ruben Castro, like I said earlier, is 41 years old as well. It, it is a team which, without a shadow of a doubt, needs to get younger. Yes, there are a couple of youngsters here that could have some okay potential, but for the most part, this team must get younger. It is far, far too old. So the first thing I decided to do with Malaga after giving out those contract extensions was improve our youth scouting network. Now, if you're a new viewer to the channel, then firstly, hi, welcome. My name is Docs. I've been playing and watching football since I was six years old and now 30 years old. So big football fan, of course. But as for my uh, career modes, if you're a new viewer to the channel, then basically youth scouting is really, really important to me. In all the saves I've done over the 10 years I've been on YouTube, youth scouting has always been a really important component of the vast majority of my FIFA career modes and that is because I really believe that youth players can make a save your own and make it so exciting. So for Malaga I decided to spend practically all of our transfer budget on hiring two well-class scouts, one four-star, five-star, and another double five-star. And I sent all three of my scouts out because you always start with a, a, a scout nowadays in your youth scouting network to begin with. One has gone to Spain. That's the best one, five-star, five-star. I've also sent one to Morocco and also decided to send one to Portugal as well. Now, the reason I've done this is because Malaga are a side in the Segunda Division right now they don't really have the resources to just go and scout anywhere in the world. So we want to stay quite close to home. So being in the Andalusia region of Spain, in the south of Spain, we're going to look primarily close to home. I always send one scout in the country we're based in anyway. So sending one scout around Spain, looking for some Andalusia talents, but also Portugal, the neighbouring country to the left-hand side of Malaga and Spain, but also as well, Morocco, and that is because Morocco, World Cup semi-finalists in Qatar, is a country that is just to the south of Spain as well. So the countries like Morocco and Algeria, for example, we will look to pick up some players from those countries and try and set up some youth camps, if you will, in North Africa, quite close to Malaga. So uh, yeah, we, we probably will start to scout a little bit further afield as time goes on. I was looking to see if you could scout Qatar. Unfortunately, you can't scout Qatar at the moment, uh, because obviously Malaga are owned by a Qatari businessman, but 
But uh, yeah, uh, at the moment, Qatar is not scoutable in the games when Yanacho is Portugal, Morocco and Spain. And fingers crossed, we'll find some decent youth prospects from play, uh, from uh, locations very close to the Andalusia region in Spain. Um, so following that, I was able to sell a couple of players. Uh, as you'll see, we sold Shavaria and also Iskasi, who ended up choosing Bergeau CF here as well. Like I said, this Malaga team needs to get younger. There are quite a lot of players here that are in their 30s. I don't want to sell too many players players in the first season. I want to try and keep it quite realistic if I can and keep the team quite similar to what we're seeing with Malaga in real life. So I don't really want to sell too many players in the first season, maybe four or five, possibly six at a stretch, but for the most part, keep the team quite similar to what we're seeing in real life right now. And uh, as you'll see, we sold Josebed to Huddersfield Town as well uh, and had a bid here for Javi Jimenez. This is a uh, left back. He's actually quite decent to be fair, 65 rated, 26 years old, but out of contract come the end of the season. So I will sell a few players to raise a bit of cash, but um, yeah, I'm not going to do a complete rebuild in season one. Sell, you know, 80% of the squad and just bring in a load of Spanish wonder kids. Yes, of course, I would like to sell a few players. Yes, of course, I would like to get a little bit younger, but for the most part, I want to keep most, most, if not all, of the core here. So uh, after we got our scouting reports back from our first months of scouting in Portugal, Spain, and also Morocco as well, you'll see we've picked up a couple of players for our academy. Because our Malaga team is just two and a half star, there's not much quality here, and there's not that much young talent either. At the moment, a lot of players are going to make our academy pretty quickly because we don't need to have the creme de la creme, if you will, right from the very get-go because even players with showing great potential would be our brightest prospects by far. So as you'll see, I got very excited when I found this guy, Tony Flores. Um, I put a few players in the academy here. I uh, thought I'd take a look at them as soon as they come into our youth squad. But yeah, for the most part, I just thought... Yeah, okay, well, this is good enough for me, even if they're not absolute star players. You know, I'm okay with players that are like low 80 potential, um, if that's all we can get for the time being. So after we sold Jimenez uh, to Pisa, our left back, you see the three players in our academy here. One from Portugal and also two from Spain as well. None from Morocco making the cut from the first month. And I was very excited about the lad at the top there. Now, when I saw the valuation, I was thinking, oh, this could be a potentially special player already, but it's not. It's just showing great potential potential. Tony Flores, a 17 year old, 67 rated right midfielder with four star skill moves, three star week for 86 ball control already on the 17 year old and high, high work rates. You know, I love that. He will need to get a little bit better defensively though. If we keep him on the right hand side, I could definitely see this guy playing through the middle of the park as a CAM or a centre forward in our free at the back system. But if we do keep him on the right hand side, which I will to begin with, then he needs to get better defensively. And I love how like as soon as I gave him a pro deal, I got a bid from him from Real Oviedo. Literally just signed a pro deal and Real Oviedo put a bid in. Absolutely not, lads. But uh, yeah, this is what I meant a moment ago there. Like even though showing great potential, which is a potential tag, is the lowest potential tag in the game, which is just over 80, um, it's still good enough for this guy to have the best potential in the team. So we don't need to have certified wonder kids coming for our academy in season one. Even showing great potential would make them the highest potential players in the team but Tony Flores will be our starting right midfield this team because if I've got a player with showing great potential I've got to maximize his development and again for Malaga there are a couple of decent young players here so we will make sure we throw them in in the first season to give them enough exposure to grow in season one but in a free at the back system yeah Tony Flores does need to improve the defensive stats because he'll be running up and down the pitch all game long and also contributing heavily on the defensive end with no fullbacks or wingbacks in this Malaga team so for the opening day of the Segunda Division we were taking on Deportivo Alavés as a recently relegated team to the Segunda Division. So heading into this game here, I will take a point, no doubt about it. Our objectives, as you would have seen at the start of the episode, are to finish in mid-table in the Segunda Division and reach the last 16 at the Copa del Rey. Obviously, we'll be going for promotion, no doubt about that. Every single season, I want to get up to the next division. I've got very high expectations and high ambitions, but... This is going to be a real test here. I'm not an afraid about a player. You know, I'm really, really not. I'm, I'm quite old school. I'm not always 4-4-2. My favorite formation is 4-2-3-1, but three at the back systems for me, I always really struggle with, but I do like to play the way that the game is set up from when I take over the team. But heading into the game, I really struggled early in this game. Alaves will be a side that will be battling for promotion this year. So it's going to be a real test on the opening night here at the La Rosa Leda. Great real stadium in the game as well here in Andalusia. And we could have fell behind early game where penalty half an hour in. But Manolo Reina made an incredible save to keep it at 0-0. But six minutes after the restart, this was a game where I was like, okay, 
this is an RTG. There's a long, long way to go. We fell behind soon after the restart, a cracking strike from the edge of the area, and we trailed by a goal. And there's no doubt about it. This Malaga team is a big, big work in progress. It was a really, really tough opening game. Really struggled in this game. Wasn't really getting any chances whatsoever. Our first one did fall directly after we fell behind, though. Fran Villalba going for goal from just outside the area. Great save. Kept it at 1-0. But as I was still trying to figure out the best way to play with this Malaga team in open play when in possession, well, in the end, our first goal came from a set piece. Yep, corner whipped into the middle. And Ruben Castro, 41 years old, I think the oldest outfield player I've ever used, scores the first goal in the Docks era here at the La Rosaleda. Yep, corner whipped into the middle and Castro leaping like a 21-year-old, let alone a 41-year-old, heading in from the corner and giving us the equaliser. No doubt about it, though. I'll need to improve this Malaga time, uh, team and get to grips very, very quickly with a style of play because the fact that my goal came from a corner and from a set piece, and other than that, I really struggled to knock the ball around and create chances, kind of says it all. This is a really, really poor Malaga team. It's going to be a long RTG, no doubt about that. And with four million in the budget, yes, a decent youth prospect in our first 11 already, but we do need to make some improvements with three weeks to go before the transfer window slam shut so guys in the comment section down below if you have any transfer targets for me whatsoever please do leave them in the comment section down below i'd like to keep it semi-realistic in the first season so some spanish talents into the good division would definitely be targets of mine so yeah any transfer targets let me know in the comment section down below with four million pounds in the budget thanks for watching the first episode of the rtg career mode guys much love to you all and i'll see you for the second episode of the rtg career mode of our new team malaga very soon